Hello everyone, thank you all for being with us today. I am Brett Blau, I am the grape entomologist at the University of Georgia, and today I'll be discussing grape root borer management in muscadine vineyards. Now, first, let's start off. If you go to the smallfruits.org website, we have a great management guide for muscadines. Looking at that guide, you'll notice that there are a variety of insects that will attack muscadine, but today I really just want to focus on grape root borer which can be one of the most destructive pests we have in the southeast. So a little introduction to grape root borer. Grape root borer is a clear wing moth. Um, the adults actually resemble wasps. Uh, they are daytime flyers and you can be seen flying around the vines. But unlike wasps, grape root borer cannot sting, they cannot bite. They're basically harmless to us. Uh, unless you're a grapevine and then the larvae can be very, very destructive because these, these uh, grape root borer can attack both wild and cultivated grapes. And the females can lay an average of 300 eggs. Uh, thankfully, only about 1.5 to 2.7% of those survive. But those that do survive, the larvae hatch out of those eggs. They drop to the ground and tunnel into the roots and begin feeding on the inside of the root. Underground feeding on these roots, this process can take up to about two years to complete. And by that second year, those larvae are about one inch long. They're white with a brown head. After that two years, the adults emerge from the soil in the early summer. When they emerge, they leave behind these pupil casings here, usually at the top of the soil. Unfortunately, a single larvae feeding on the inside of a root can reduce a vine's yield by up to 50%. And so when you have several larvae feeding on a vine, even on a well-established vine, you can see that's going to reduce vigor, reduce winter survival, decrease fruit quality, and eventually could lead to vine death. So because these larvae are feeding on the roots below the surface, it's really hard to know whether or not you're having problems until it's too late. Basically, once that vine starts to die, then you notice there's a problem. But we can monitor the moths before, or hopefully before they become an issue, using either pheromone-baited bucket traps or pupil case sampling. Using these bucket traps, it's basically a lidded bucket type trap Inside there, there's a pheromone that you put here in the top. And then in the bottom here, we put an insecticidal strip. So the adult moths, specifically the males, are attracted to that pheromone, go in here, travel down a little cone, get stuck in the bottom and die thanks to that insecticidal strip. We can then monitor the number of adults in these traps and basically assess the populations within our vineyard. By putting out a, a single trap per every two acres of vines within your vineyard, this can help us keep track of moth populations near a vineyard. We want to deploy these traps late June and check them about weekly until September, which is basically when their activity period ends. Now, these pheromones are very attractive and are specific to grape root borer, and they can attract the moths from a far distance. Because of this, you can be actually pulling moths from uh, nearby or the, the surrounding habitat. Now, the moths that are coming are the males, so they cannot actually attack your vines. So you're not going to be increasing the problem by using these, these bucket traps. But the problem here is that we cannot use these bucket traps to determine the exact number of moths in a small vineyard block. And we can't use them to really use a, uh, a threshold-based management tactic because we really don't know how many moths are actually coming from the vineyard itself. A more precise way of monitoring is looking at the pupil cases. So like I mentioned, as the adults emerge from their pupil, pupil case, they, those cases are often left on the soil surface, shown here. So we can actually visually count the number of these pupil cases left near the base of a vine to provide a more accurate assessment of the infestation level of grape root borer in a vineyard. But because you're actually literally on your hands and knees looking for these pupil casings uh, beneath the vines, 
This can be a bit more labor labor intensive than just using those those bucket traps, but it really does give you a more accurate representation of infestation within the vineyard. Because if these pupil casings are there, that means that there was once a larvae feeding on the roots. So if you're going to do this sampling, it should be done weekly. Again, starting about late June and ending in September. But rather than focusing on all the vines in a vineyard, um, I would recommend looking more at the vines that look like they're unhealthy, ones that are struggling with a little bit of vigor, vigor um, because those are the ones that are more likely to have issues with uh, with uh, grape root bore rather than those really nice healthy vines that are doing well. Um, then when you're looking, inspect the soil about 18 inches uh, and, uh, and the radius around from the base of the vine. Uh, scrape away the soil or any, any debris there to look for these pupil casings that might be sitting on the top. Sometimes they can be buried about, about less than an inch below that soil surface, so brushing away a little bit of soil can help help expose those those exuvia there. And then of course, because you're looking for them on the soil, having bare soil around a vine is gonna make it much more easy to monitor than if the vine is surrounded by vegetation. So when it came to management, previously chlorpyrifos was our key insecticide that was labeled for grape root borer and, and, and muscadine. This was applied as a soil drench in the summer to the base of the vines to kill the moths that are either emerging or the female moths that are coming back and laying their eggs on the vines. Unfortunately, on March 1st, 2022, the EPA has revoked all tolerances of chlorpyrifos and fruiting crops. So this can no longer be used in muscadine to manage grape root borer. There are a couple of cultural methods that can help uh, reduce grape root borer problems in grapes. Uh, one is mounding soil under the vines. Doing this prior to the adult emergence, you can actually create a physical barrier that helps stop those adults from emerging. Basically, as they're trying to emerge from those pupil casings, if there's a big um, about a foot of soil on top of those casings, uh, the, the moths cannot get out and they cannot emerge uh, and therefore they are stuck and end up dying. Our first line of defense though is really weed management. So reducing the number of weeds and the amount of vegetation surrounding your vines can help reduce the egg laying sites for the females. Basically they, they those eggs can be protected by all those weeds from either the environment or from natural enemies that would otherwise love to feed on these unprotected eggs. So by removing those, those weeds and that vegetation from around a vine can create basically a desert that will help increase the potential for those eggs to desiccate or for uh, predators to find those eggs and feed on them. But we also have some alternative management tactics like mating disruption and entomopathogenic nematodes. So I'll be discussing those um, uh, further on. So first of all, mating disruption. So mating disruption uh, relies on sex pheromones to do as the name applies to disrupt the mating. Basically, you, we, we put this synthetic pheromone out in a, vi in a vineyard and it stops those male moths from finding females. And if the males can't find the females, they can't mate. Without mating, there's no eggs, no offspring, no offspring, no larvae to feed on the vines. So this can dramatically de decrease the number of larvae in a vineyard, and then so subsequently significantly reduce injury to those vines. But how does it work? All right? Here's just a little illustration of, of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about mating disruption. So we have our vines. A female grape root borer flies in, lands on the vine, and begins to look for a mate. So she releases her pheromone. A male comes across, finds that pheromone, says, ooh, there's a female nearby. So he follows that pheromone, and he can pretty much precisely follow the plume that's produced by that female, find the female mate. She will then lay her eggs near those vines. The eggs will hatch into larvae. The larvae will then tunnel into the roots and begin feeding and causing damage. Well, under mating disruption, we still can have those females come in, but then we also put out these little dispensers that are filled with that synthetic pheromone. 
The female will still produce her pheromone, but those dispensers will also release their pheromone. So once that male comes by, he's like, oh, there's, a, there's some females nearby. But when he starts to f search for that female, he's going to go all over. That, that fa giant pheromone cloud is going to basically distract him and cl cloud his, his ability from finding that female. Eventually, he will give up or will just eventually die because he has not found that female. And regardless, by not finding that female, he will not mate, no mate, no offspring, no larvae to cause destruction. So some real world example here. So this is from a couple years ago monitoring grape root borer activity. So in a standard uh, a vineyard that's just doing normal management, we can get a activity where the, the adult moths are flying um, most of them emerge in early August, and that means that we're, we're catching them in these bucket traps. So if we're catching males in the bucket traps, that means they, those males can also find the females and potentially mating. And if there's mating going on, there's a potential for larvae feeding on our roots. Now under our mating disruption vineyard, we see in this, this red line here, we had zero adult males in our traps through the entire season here which is showing that if those males can't find those traps that means that most likely they are not able to find the females either which means there's no mating taking place which hopefully reduces our chance of having any larvae feeding on our vines so in muscadine we have a product called isomate grb this is the only commercially available product for grape root borer uh, right now on the market uh, but it's uh, one that works well uh, and is easy to put out. It takes 100 twist ties per acre. You put them on the trellis wire here, those dispensers. Uh, if you put them out before the adult emergence, which is approximately the first week of July, it can, those dispensers can be effective for the entire field season. So you need to put them out every year, um, but after a few years, they can be highly effective and significantly reduce the number of grapefruit borer in your vineyard and reducing any damage that might result from those borers. Now, because of the two year life cycle of the grapefruit borer, it definitely takes at least two years before you can see any benefit from using them. Uh, but after those two years, you can continue to see benefit year after year. All right, moving on to entomopathogenic nematodes. So, Nematodes generally get a bad rap because there are plant parasitic nematodes that can really cause problems to vines uh, and to other plants uh, and other crops. But these are beneficial nematodes. They only attack insects. So these are uh, entomopathogenic nematodes or EPNs. Specifically, or, although there are uh, several species of EPNs that will attack a variety of different insects, um, uh, this uh, is, we're really specific looking at the Heterohabditis bacteriophora. This species can attack grape root borer and has been shown to reduce infestations and can be actually as effective as the broad spectrum chlorpyrifos um, when managing um, grape root borer in grapes. What's great about this species is that it's commercially available, it's reasonably priced, and can be easily applied with a backpack sprayer or even an herbicide sprayer and has the potential to be preventative and curative so you can apply it as you would an insecticide as a preventative measure applying it to the soil um, and if there's any any larvae there they'll attack go out and attack them or curatives if there are already larvae inside those vines being a living free organism these nematodes can actually actually seek out the larvae and attack them within the vine. So just a little little uh, cartoon showing what uh, what I'm talking about with these with these nematodes. So here's an actual picture of of an EPN here, a little little round worm, and the EPNs are are effective when they're they're called infective juveniles. So those infective juveniles will attack their host here. They release a bacteria which will then kill that host. The nematodes inside the host, so inside, in this case, the grape root borer, will begin to develop. As they mature, they will then reproduce. 
as those new infected juveniles are ready, they will burst out of that larvae and seek out a new host to infest to basically create that whole cycle again. So in muscadine, we have a couple of commercial products available um, that, uh, that will work for grape root borer. We want to make sure to follow the label for mixing and application of methods. Um, but our research shows that we want about 500,000 infective juveniles per vine. And so these, these different products will come and they'll tell you how many infective juveniles are, are, are there. You want to basically break that down to do about 500,000 per vine. Well, we can apply those EPNs when the GB or the grape root borer are in their pupil stage, so when they're most um, vulnerable to those infective juveniles. This is going to be approximately late May in uh, in the southeast. Apply them to the base of the vines, basically the same the same area that we are doing our monitoring for those uh, uh, those uh, pupil casings is where we, where we want to apply those EPNs. You can apply them again with a backpack sprayer or an herbicide sprayer. But the key thing to note that if you're using a sprayer um, to remove any sort of filters from that nozzle, a filter um, is basically going to be like, like razor wire to a nematode. A nematode is just a little round worm, but if it hits that metal or even a plastic um, filter, it's just going to cause them to burst and, and, and shred them up. So if you're going to use a, any sort of nozzle, Make sure to remove any filter from that. Also, because these are, are living organisms, they, they need to stay moist. So after application um, to the soil, you want to either water them in with irrigation. But if you don't have irrigation, you can come back and uh, water them in with about a quarter gallon of water per vine or apply them just prior to a rainfall. Basically, you want to make sure that the, the, the nematodes have time to get into the soil and do not desiccate on the soil surface. All right, so I'm a little, little bit of world, real world application here. Uh, so here's from another study where we're seeing those grape root borer adults come out. Uh, very similar peak in, in early August. You see another peak with those, those uh, pupil casings or exuvia here. Uh, but if we look at our treatments, uh, in this case, we were, we were comparing chlorpyrifos, that broad-spectrum insecticide, with our EPN. And only the EPN significantly reduced the number of exuvia, or those pupil casings, that we saw per vine. So it actually reduced by about half the number of pupil casings compared to our, our non-treated control here. So that's that's really exciting. That's only one year of data showing that within that even that one year we can reduce the number of grape root borer. So in summary, chlorpyrifos, the the fruit challenges were banned uh, starting March first, two thousand twenty-two. Uh, so we are no longer allowed to use chlorpyrifos or or Lohr's ban uh, in terms of management for grape root borer in muscadine. We do have some cultural options for management. Uh, look, please check out the, the smallfruits.org website for, for a little bit more information about these. But really the weed management is our first line of defense. Keeping the, a weed-free zone around the base of those vines can really help reduce uh, the risk to it have issues from grape root borer. But if you're having problems with grape root borer in your vineyard, we do have effective management options. Uh, man, uh, mating disruption and both the, uh, and, and entomopathogenic nematodes both work very well. Um, they they might not work for every location, um, but but there's some more information about that in the smallfruits.org uh, management guide. So please check those out, uh, and and hopefully the, the mating disruption and EPNs can work for you. But also note that uh, researchers like myself and um, other grape entomologists are looking for new ways to best manage our grape root borer. So hopefully within the future we'll always have the best management options for you. And with that I'd like to take any questions.